Welcome to another episode of SellMyComicBooks.com Vintage Comic Book Unboxing. My name is Ashley Cotter Cairns and I am doing a rare comic book unboxing because this month I actually managed to pick up a collection here in Canada. Due to the uh, COVID-19 situation, I'm not even able to travel down to the office to deliver this collection in person, so I thought I would do the unboxing up here in Canada. I've got a box and it's a pretty exciting box because I know what's in here. Uh, there are two boxes actually, there's the, the little box here that I'm going to keep for last because it's probably got the best stuff in, I know it's got the best stuff in. And then we've got this other box and the first book is actually quite a scarce book, I haven't actually had too many copies of this. This is uh, Pep 155 and uh, Archie collectors know this as the the Catwoman cover because Sabrina I guess it's Sabrina I don't know Archie all that well but this sexy girl dressed in a black sort of Catwoman style costume and we've I've maybe only seen one other copy of this book since we started the business in 2012 we don't get this very often it's it smells pretty bad this whole collection has been exposed to moisture and you can see I hope you can see on the camera there's staining and one of those typical things the kids do with pencil where they've outlined the the pep in the title there's a tear at the top there too um, this is actually surprisingly valuable book you, you see it very rarely and we are really excited to get this one I know Sean collects Archie, but I also know that Sean won't accept this for his collection because he's very particular about condition. This one's probably maybe a, a 3.0 because of all the water staining. Moving on. Detective Comics, issue number 285. And this is, a, it looks like a Cro-Magnon man breaking out of an ice, ice block. Uh, People who live in Montreal will probably be familiar with that from Friday nights out on the town. This also has water staining. Uh, it also smells pretty musty. I have no idea if CGC look at uh, the smell of a comic when they're, they're determining a grade. I know that sounds strange, but you can imagine buying a collection that stinks, like maybe a skunk sprayed it or something. Uh, I, I don't know if that's ever happened and I don't know how CGC would, would grade a book for being especially smelly. I've had collections where it smells so bad that the whole room the box is in stinks of, of whatever it is the comics stink of. So I'd be curious to see what grade these books get. This one's probably it's a bit nicer actually than the other one. I'd say this is more like in the in the fine minus range. It's got a bit of a crease on the right hand side and a little tear there. I don't know if you can see that on camera. It's not easy. This, the light's not fantastic. I am going to invest in better lighting uh, if I do more of these videos here in Canada. Next we have another Detective Comics. These are classic covers from I was going to say late 50s, early 60s. This one's actually not in very good shape. What's this? 1960. There you go. The negative Batman. I actually find Batman can be quite a negative character sometimes. He can be just like such a downer. Uh, this has got a big spine split down to the first staple. I don't know if you can see that. So the cover is ooh, detached. Okay, that wasn't me. It was already detached. I, I don't feel so bad about that. So the cover's completely detached. Uh, we've had, in our experience, the maximum grade a book can get with a detached cover is 3.0. This one won't get a 3.0 because of that huge tear on the spine as well. It's probably like a 1.8, 2.0, but it's still a nice readable copy. This one's heavily water stained. What's this? This is actually a Batman title. Oh, ugh, this one's disgusting. Just look at the staining on that back cover. Ugh, gross. This one's one of the worst condition books in the collection. Uh, the, wa the water has really soaked into this and it's actually made the staples uh, rust. 
and the staples have rusted and stained the cover. It's okay though, because this is not a particularly valuable book. This is probably going to end up in uh, a multi-book lock on eBay. So I'm glad, considering some of the other books in this collection, I'm glad that was one of the ones that got the worst damage. Here's an ACG book, Mysteries Unknown Worlds. It looks okay on the front, but on the back you can see it's also been exposed to the water that this collection's been exposed to. I don't know how much you can see on, on the camera there. It also feels like it's had water damage. And sometimes the pages can feel like a, a little bit rough when they've soaked up a, a ton of water. And actually the, the front cover's got some nasty staining on it too. So that's a pretty low grade book. No, this one's not a bad copy. This is Flash 119. Mirror Master. One of the early Flash villains. There's a little bit of gloss missing there on the cover. I don't know how, you, how much of that you can be able to see just by the Mirror Master's face there. Uh, it's hard to do this on your own. That could have been a tape pull. Tape pulls tend to be when there's a piece of tape on a comic book bag that's dangling because the lazy person who opens the bag can't be bothered to take the tape off or cut the tape. And then the tape lands on the cover as you're taking it out of the bag and then you go, oh no! And often people just pull and then of course it rips. This, actually I don't think that's what that is. It looks a bit more like a, an eraser. Someone's to try to erase something or something like that. It's a sort of rub. There's some creasing on the corner there. This is a pretty decent copy. It's escaped most of the water damage this collection has suffered from, and I'd say it's probably more like a 5.0. Uh, I'd have to look that up, but I guess it's worth about a couple of hundred bucks. It's quite a nice book. Oh, this one's a weird book to find in this collection. Action Comics 454. That's what, mid-80s, something like that? Oh no, much earlier than mid 80s, 1975. Still, considering this collection is mostly Silver Age and, and late Golden Age, that's uh, that's much later, it's 10 years later. But it's a pretty funny cover. I don't know if you've seen that cover before. I actually posted a picture of this on Facebook. Superman squatting down near what looks suspiciously like McDonald's, gobbling as many burgers as those waitresses can bring him. I'd, I'd actually eat in McDonald's if the waitresses existed and they, they served you burgers like that. But uh, sadly you have to carry your own burgers to the table. And here's another later book. Superman 290. This one's got the heavy water staining on the back and this is probably going to end up in a dollar bin. So if you can get down to Maine, we're actually dot com comics and collectibles in Freeport. Uh, 136 High Street in Freeport, about 150 meters away from LL Bean. So if you're coming to get some stuff from LL Bean, be sure to come by and check out Dotcom Comics. When you look through our dollar bins, you'll find lots of stuff like that. Which, honestly, it's not worth the trouble of selling 70s books that are damaged. We'd much rather stick them into a dollar box and let people get excited when they find them. Here's a much nicer book, Action 266. This is a pretty popular period after Action Comics 252 when Supergirl was first unveiled to the world. This is a pretty clean looking copy. It does have some water damage, uh, especially on the back, but I think once this has been pressed, the page quality is quite nice. I think once this has been pressed, it's gonna be about a 5560, something like that. Nice copy. I like those early Supergirl covers. Another later book. Action 450. Oh boy, look at the back of that. It looks like someone's tried to mop up a, a spill in a bathroom. That's really bad. It's probably going to go in the dollar bin. Too bad. 1970s book in the dollar bin. Still with DC and Silver Age. Adventure Comics 271. A Superboy cover. Krypton, Kryptonite Meteors, and that's a Lex Luthor cover. Those are really popular. Lex Luthor's about one of the only DC villains that is still maintaining the interest of collectors. I think Lex Luthor covers are undervalued. In fact, I'd say like if you had to put me on the spot and say what what's the most undervalued 
part of this hobby at the moment, I'd say Silver Age DC. Silver Age DC is way, way cheaper than Silver Age Marvel of the same period. Now, obviously, there's the big difference is that Marvel make more movies, and some of the DC storylines are pretty hokey. You might even say almost all the DC Silver Age storylines are pretty hokey. But even so, whenever we buy a collection that has Marvel and DC from the Silver Age, the DC is always lower grade. I don't know whether they use worse paper or what, but it it doesn't age as well. So high grade DC Silver Age is really, really, really tough. And I think that that area of the hobby is, is really undervalued. So I think Lex Luthor covers would be a really cool thing to collect. Not the easiest thing to find in high grade, but books like this will one day be sought after. I think Lex Luthor's do a comeback on the big screen. And when that happens, a lot of those Lex Luthor covers are gonna be really, spiking up in value. Here's another Silver Age title that no one really cares about, Black Hawk. Early copies of Black Hawk are very tough, um, but no one seems to care. Like These books are they're pretty cool, I find. Maybe not from this, this era, but a little bit earlier than this, you get sort of like the steampunk era of Black Hawk, where the covers are very uh, sort of science fiction, meets steampunk meets Mad Max kind of thing and it it's a bit unusual uh, in the in the industry to that kind of style of books you tend to either get superhero or crime but that weird crossover between the supernatural and war kind of themes is pretty interesting there's a book called uh, a little earlier than this a couple of years earlier Black Hawk 133 um, I can't remember the <laughs> Lady Blackhawk, I think the the girl is on the cover. She's very popular in this series, and that's a that's a key issue that we never see. One of the really rare ones that just never shows up. And if you do manage to get hold of one of those, snap it up. More Blackhawk. These ten cent Silver Age DCs. This one's pretty badly water stained though. I still think that would sell on eBay for twenty bucks or so. But that's shocking when you think a Spidey from, where are we on this? 1961, it's even before Spider-Man existed. But a Fantastic Four, an early Fantastic Four from the same year would probably sell for 10, 20 times what these, sell, these things sell for in any condition. Another Black Hawk here, there's a little run of Black Hawk in this collection. Dinosaur covers are kind of popular. This one's got a big tear on the back cover unfortunately, in addition to water staining. It's kind of cool though. And we have another Black Hawk. It's a pretty weird cover. The problem, it's got stains on the back cover, I can see that. Horrible water stains. The problem with the Comics Code Authority is that there was only so much they could do with things like horror and supernatural themes. It was it kind of held back a lot of the stories. That looks like Lady Blackhawk cover. That's kind of cool. So that must be a fairly early Lady Blackhawk appearance. That's who I was trying to remember the name of just now. Lady Blackhawk. I guess because she's uh, kind of sexy and uh, looks good in the costume, that's why she's popular. But I wouldn't be surprised if this book did pretty well on eBay, even in this state. It's probably worth about $50. Oh my. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen this book before. Sergeant Bilko's Private Doberman. And it is heavily, heavily water stained. It's pretty funny. This is this is one of those lost in translation things because Sergeant Bilko was a huge cultural phenomenon. <laughs> In the early 50s, uh, early 60s, and late 50s, but now is completely forgotten, and, and probably no one cares about this title. This is a cool book. Oh, it's in really bad shape. Yeah. This is one of those what's known as grey tone covers, Sea Devils, but it's the showcase appearance number 29. I don't know without looking it up. I know 
showcases the first appearance of Sea Devils, but I can't remember if it was this one. My gut tells me it's number 27 that's the first appearance, but I could be completely wrong about that. I just remember this is a classic cover with that great seahorse. That is a really awesome cover. I love that. I, I actually think Showcase is one of those titles that's really hard to put a run together. It's a, it's a tough title. Unfortunately, this is maybe a 1.5 with the tears and the water staining, but still, that's a pretty cool cover. I like that a lot. Another cultural phenomenon that no longer really exists, Jerry Lewis. Adventures of Jerry Lewis. Most of his adventures seem to involve women on desert islands and things like that. People who need rescuing, in inverted commas. Uh, this is pretty heavily stained and I don't think it's worth very much money. And another Jerry Lewis. There are collectors of this title. It's actually more popular than the next book I'm going to show you, which is extremely unpopular. Probably the worst DC title ever. And that would be Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen. Not only is this an unpopular title, but this one is an absolute dog. It's been read to pieces. I don't know who actually would want to read this title, but whoever did, did a good job. It's been completely thrashed. And honestly, considering this is what? Jimmy Olsen number 30. It's going to be early 60s, isn't it? Late 50s, maybe even. 58. 1958. This might actually be a $1958 book. <laughs> it's, such, it's in such bad shape. Even if this was in nice condition, it wouldn't sell for very much. That is that's horrible. Back to Detective. Detective Comics, issue 273. It's a real shame because I really like this era of Detective Comics there. They're hard to find in, in nice condition. But this is definitely not in nice condition. This has got a big clobber of water. Oh my God, look at the back cover. See the stain on the back cover there? Probably the staples are rusted. Uh, it feels really horrible when you turn the pages of a stained book like this. Yeah, some, some staining on the staples. Uh, it's a shame. I like this cover. I like the Lizard Men cover. That's really kind of cool. Uh, Dragon Society, whatever. You can tell I, I handle Spidey more than Detective Lizard Man. Another Detective. Unfortunately, this one's also heavily water damaged. Detective 296. This is two issues away from the Clayface Silver Age reappearance. This one's not a key issue, and it's probably a VG, or maybe not even quite a VG. It's got a stain on the front there. Nasty fold down it. I don't think that's a subscription crease. It's actually like some kid has just folded it in half to tuck it into his back pocket before cycling off into the distance to his treehouse, which is what kids used to do before bloody video games existed and ruined all childhood. That was an editorial moment. Action Comics. I didn't look at the issue number before I did that. 254, this is two, two issues after Supergirl's first appearance, which is a shame because that's actually a valuable book. But this one has a detached cover, heavy water staining. It's probably a 2.0 at most, probably a 1.8. But this is still a cool action comics from the, I'm gonna say the 1958, something like that. 1959 is that? 1959. Bizarro on the cover too. Bizarro is another character I think long overdue for an appearance in a movie. I think Bizarro's got a lot of um, potential and his first appearance is, uh, I'm trying to think now, that's a Superboy isn't it? Superboy 68 is it? That's a, that's a book to watch out for. Well, a little bit later now, My Greatest Adventure 67. Basically a title no one cares about until the Doom Patrol. 
issue in number 80 and this is quite a nice copy it's a shame it's one of, actually one of the nicer condition books in the collection it's probably a 7 or something like that it's nice and clean no water staining really and no real creasing it had to be that book didn't it how can that have <laughs> been one of the others it's just the way it is isn't it a lottery of, of comic books you think about how many comic books didn't even survive it's nice to even have these House of Mystery, I think that's at 94. Yeah, you don't see too many of the uh, earlier House of Mysteries. I tend to see these sort of Bronze Age and the late Silver Age stuff, but you don't see these earlier ones very often. And I never see the really early House of Mystery, the early, early issues from the late 50s or early 50s, whatever it was. This is uh, the creature in the Echo Lake, it's kind of cool. But it's also water stained. Nice one to have though. Oh, world's finest. I don't know why, but I sort of have a thing for the world, the um, DC pink they used on some covers. I think that co that color, it's it's really beautiful that pink, and it shows wear and creasing very very well. So like if you have a book like uh, Batman One Seventy One, which was the first Silver Age Riddler, which is almost identical color to this, I think. You can see the spine stress on it and any creasing very, very easily. I really love that colour though. It's just really cool, like fat owl creature threatening our heroes. Next we have the second least popular title in DC world. Superman's Girlfriend Lois Lane, number 30. And this one is an absolute rag. It's got a piece torn off the back cover. It is water stained, it is ragged, it is going in the dollar bin. Now, Adventure Comics, number 266. I don't think this is a key issue. There's a bunch of key issues from this era. There's, there's the retelling of the um, Green Arrow origin and things like that from this era, but this one, ugh. This is heavily water stained. It has a detached top staple and it's rusted through and that is not a nice copy. Back to World's Finest. One of those semi-goofy covers they had in this era. But I kind of like this one. It's almost like a stuffed animal Incredible Hulk transformation going on. So you've got like the David Banner yellow cute stuffed animal at the bottom and then the transformation into the big green ugly incredible hulk stuffed animal thing going on there i'm sure there's a lot more to it than that but being dc in the silver age maybe not that could actually be the storyline the menace of superman's pet there you go incredible pet hulk maybe that's what inspired the incredible hulk because the hulk did not appear for a couple more years after this and we have a superman here Oh dear, that's not very nice. This is Superman 141. 10 cent Superman, but it's baggy. Look at the spine here. Might be detached even. Uh, yep, covers detached. Water stained. Pretty low grade. And here's another one. This is. Uh, sort of Lilliputian inspiration. Now remember earlier I talked about tape pulls. <laughs> this one's got multiple tape pulls. So you own this book, it's in a bag and a board, you pull it out of the bag and the board once, leaving a piece of tape trailing, you, you get a tape pull. Years later you think, hey, you know, I, I'm, I'm good this time. I'm gonna pull this book out of the bag and board and this time I'm not gonna let the tape, give me a tape pull, oops. So there's four tape pulls on this. I don't think that's even possible. Maybe someone just got upset the first time and decided to do it on purpose the next time. Anyway, it's a it's a pretty ragged Superman 102. It's a shame because oh, it's got a tear as well. It's a shame because it's quite an early issue. But that is like a 2-0. Oh, that's strange. <laughs> is this the maybe uh, one of the only Marvel books in the collection? 
Iron Man 68, 25 cent marble in like VG condition. I'm not going to spend any time on that one. Here's another blast from the past, Bob Hope. There's not a lot of hope for this one as a comic book dealer with its heavy water staining, unpopular subject matter, detached lower staple, and color loss on the front cover from probably from being wet and stuck to another book. That is a dog. And here's an early Lois Lane, Lois Lane number 10. Somehow appropriate that this unpopular title has been used to mop up a spill. It's probably a 2-0 because it's got really horrible heavy water stain in it. You can see that on the camera. Or the overhead camera that I'm trying to use at the same time. That's a pretty gross copy and it's not worth very much. Oh, I didn't expect to see this. Is this the big book? It is not. Casper and Nightmare. Casper and Nightmare. The Harvey hits. So it's probably even a reprint. Harvey hits uh, 19, oh my goodness me, their, their text is even smaller than DC's. 1962, 63 maybe? Doesn't really matter. It's it's gonna go in the kids kids box. We actually have in the, in dotcom comics and collectibles, we have a three drawers in our, in our vintage backstop just for kids. Everything's a dollar. We want to encourage as many kids as possible to become comic book readers. So if you come down to Freeport with your children, they'll be books for them. I'll we'll probably give them them for free, to be honest. And the final book from this weird box is All American Men of War 81, classic dogfight cover. Again, it's water stained. There's rust coming through the staples on the cover there. Not a very nice book. Now you might be thinking, Ash, how, how much did you spend on this collection? How much was this collection? Are you sure you were doing the right thing when you paid $13,000 for this box of crap? Wait a minute. You haven't seen the last three books from this collection yet. When you do, you'll realize why we paid thirteen thousand dollars for this collection. Here's the first of the three key issues that came in this collection. It's Flash 105. First appearance, the Mirror Master. That is a classic Silver Age comic book. I think it's 1959. Very, very scarce book. I think we've maybe only had two copies of this in the whole eight years I've been doing this. This one's not very nice, you can see up here it's got some colour loss here, it's probably been stuck to another book because this has had some water exposure. It's not one of the worst in this collection by any means. I know some of the centre wraps are detached as well but it is complete. And the spine is okay. I didn't see any restoration on this collection. I think it's probably a solid 3.0 though. That's, that's a pretty nice book to find. Here's another early Flash. Flash 107. <laughs> this, this sums up exactly how I feel about track and field when I try and do it. People who run backwards can beat me at it. Uh, this is also kind of a scarce book. These early Flash issues from the 60s are pretty tough. They're usually in about this kind of shape though when we do get them. Though this one may be a tiny bit nicer. Usually they're sort of 3, 3, 5, 4, 0 at the best. This could be a 5, 0. Well, no, maybe not. There's quite a lot going on on the right hand side there. And you can see down here there's quite a lot of creasing. There's probably a solid VG though. Oh, there's a bit of a water stain there. Anyway, it's in the same ballpark as the ones we usually get. Finally. Are you ready? Incredible Hulk number one. And it's a really nice copy of Incredible Hulk number one. 
I was shocked when I saw this book because honestly the, the rest of the collection is mostly DC, mostly very heavily water stained and quite a lot of it is torn and ragged and red to pieces but this has got some Marvel chipping on the right hand edge. I don't know if you can see that. It's got some Marvel chipping. Actually, it's a really nice copy. I actually own a Hulk one myself from my own personal collection. It's not as nice as this. The Marvel chipping definitely is going to hold this back. There is some creasing at the top right hand corner. Don't know if you can see that. Just the top corner there has been bumped in the past. And then on the back, it does have some foxing, as you might expect from a collection that's got all this water damage. But it's complete. The staples are clean. And the centerfold might be. I think that's okay. Might be attached to the centerfold, the lower staple, but the cover is nice and firmly attached. The pages have a little bit of foxing on them too, which is going to hold this back, but. We really think that this this has a shot at uh, at five o, and we're going to send it to CGC very soon, and we'll keep you posted on what grade it gets. We'll do an unboxing eventually when it comes back from CGC in its shiny new holder. That is the reason that we paid thirteen thousand dollars for this collection. Incredible Hulk 1 is actually another book I would consider to be heavily undervalued. It's still an expensive book. I mean, this is worth probably fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000 in this condition. But considering how much AF-15 has gone up in value in the last few years and how much other similar books from this era like Fantastic Four number 1 has gone up, this book has not. It's maybe appreciated about 30% in typical VG grade. Which sounds good, but some of the books around it, like AF15 and FF1, have appreciated 100% or more in that same era. So I think that, and the fact that this is a very, very rare book, it really is. I mean, there are, there are hundreds of them in the census. It's not like there are only two in the world. But when I say it's rare, we never see this book. This, this, this comes along in collections a couple of times a year, two, three, four times a year max, and it's never as nice as this. They're always real rough copies. There's quite a lot of price compression. That's another thing I want to talk about uh, on value, but I'm going to do a video on this at some point. Price compression on low grade key issues. Hulk's particularly prone to that. A 0.5 is worth nearly four grand. And you're telling me that a 3.5 is only worth 10 grand? It doesn't make sense. There's, there's, a, there's room for this book to appreciate in value. And this is a very nice copy. I am actually tempted to trade my book for this one when it comes back. So I'm pretty sure, apart from the, the foxing, this might actually be white pages. It's a really nice copy. And I don't know if you've ever read the early Hulk storylines, but they're pretty cool. The gray, the gray-skinned Hulk was a one-hit wonder because he was green in issue two, and, and this, is, this is a really nice book to own and enjoy. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel, please hit the notification bell and check us out on the web at sellmycomicbooks.com and .comcomics.com and on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, have I forgotten anything? Are we on Twitch yet? I don't think so. I might have twitched a little bit when I picked up the Hulk there. Uh, but we are online everywhere so I hope to see you again soon. Take care for now. Goodbye.